I got to do all these things, but like, I don't have the energy to do it. Like you feel all this tired, but wired feeling that's the freeze response. And there's a lot of freeze going on right now. So our our nervous systems mirror each other. So, and we, and we hear part of the way we know someone's state is through the sound of their voice, Um, which means it's probably someone that's more in a fight or flight response, which is going to make it harder for them to be, have critical thinking because any of these survival responses, your prefrontal cortex is going to go offline. Hi there, I'm Emily Binder. I'm here with my friend, Laura Larios. She's the founder and CEO of a highly sought after consulting and coaching brand that delivers world-class nervous system and brain rewiring support for high performers. She works in the corporate tech, network marketing and entrepreneurial industries. And Laura has consulted and coached Google, BSI Group and Grow Marketing. Hi, Laura, how are you? Hi, Emily, really good. So great to be here. Today, we're going to talk about specifically how to make your voice more impactful. So why don't you just kick us off with what are maybe some ways that people could use their voice better or things they're doing they may not realize are impacting the perception of their voice? Yeah, no, great question. And I, yeah, I love that we connected on LinkedIn about this because as soon as I saw you were doing voice, I was like, oh, this is there's such a, a great parallel here with the nervous system. So um, your nervous system, when your nervous system is in a more of a ventral vagal state, which I'll talk about that in just a moment, but th- your voice is more audible, memorable, and therefore it becomes more impactful. So there's three hierarchical states of the nervous system. And specifically we're here, we're talking about the autonomic nervous system, meaning automatic. So it's not something you have to think about. And so the ventral vagal system is where you feel that sense of like connection. You can meet the demands of the day. You're usually engaged with life. There's a sense of safety within the system. And then you go into sympathetic and then that's the act, the fight or flight, which most people are familiar with that anxious or chaotic or impulsive energy. You tend to speak really fast here when you're in this state. And then in the dorsal vagal, which is that more of that shutdown response, this is when you feel really drained energy. You have like numbness. There's a feeling of disconnect. When you're in this state, the voice is going to be more monotone and like there's not going to be a lot of vocal range or prosody in the voice. And then when you're in ventral vagal, I forgot to mention that one with the voice, the voice is there's more inflection, there's good prosody, you're taking more pauses, there's there's um, you're breathing more regularly so that, you know, that sends a signal of safety to those who are listening to you. So what is prosody? Range, like vocal range. Okay. So there's, there's like, there's ups and downs and inflections in the voice. So we, if we were really monotone and flat, that sends a, a signal of threat to the nervous system. And then if we're speaking really rapidly or like we're not taking full breaths, that also sends a signal of, of not like a danger to the nervous system. So oh. we can hear each other's nervous systems through the sound of our voice. So what is, if you hear somebody that they sound like they're in monotone or maybe they're not breathing very well, do you perceive them as being nervous or not confident or how does that kind of hurt them? Yeah. So you can perceive it as maybe, yeah, maybe lack of confidence um, and or also a lot of fear. There can be fear there too. And also some like, for example, is not taking a lot of pauses. Like we're just speaking really, really rapidly. That's someone who has a lot of anxiety, um, which means it's probably someone that's more in a fight or flight response, which is going to make it harder for them to be, have critical thinking. Because any of these survival responses, your prefrontal cortex is going to go offline. It's not as necessary because the brain wants to conserve energy. So if you're in fight or flight, or if you're in a shutdown response, that part of your brain responsible for critical thinking and focus is not going to be fully available to you. Does that happen when people are presenting or speaking? Like I've had moments where I've been speaking on stage and I noticed, I felt like I was so thirsty for air and I take these big gulp breaths and you could see my chest heaving and I'm not actually nervous. It's like, I feel like I'm not getting enough oxygen. Mm. Yeah, there can be, yeah. So there's obviously a way to train your system. Like also when you're, when you're speaking, there's certain like singers do this, right. Where they train their voice and their breathing a little bit for like bigger, bigger breaths. So if you're not used to that, like those using those muscles in that way, you can definitely kind of like, like a big gulp of breath, like you just mentioned. Um, but I'll just talk a little bit about like the biology here of what's happening too, to kind of give you an idea at the anatomy piece of this, Emily. Um, so Brent, there's, there's a big, large cranial nerve called the vagus nerve. It's the 10th cranial nerve. And it runs from the base of your skull all the way down, like through your 
um, your ear and into your throat and like all the way down to your heart and then into your digestion and like kind of wanders out through the body and like touches all the organs. It's really a, an amazing nerve. So it's connected to the vocal cords. And so when we have low vagal tone, this is what then changes those or affects those inflections within the voice. And so for example, low tone is heard through the jawbone. So when you're hearing something that's low, like or monotone, this is going to send a signal threat. That's just how we're wired. And so when the nervous system perceives something as safe sounding, meaning there's more inflection and good prosody in the voice, it's going to be heard through the floating ear bones in the, in the inner ear. And so then when that's heard in that way, that's when the prefrontal cortex comes online and people can actually hear you better. So is this something that you've seen with your clients? Maybe they're making mistakes with their voice. Is it because there's like an emotional thing that they could do to maybe calm themselves down before they speak in a meeting? Or mm. is it something that's practice over time? Like how, how does somebody work on this? Yeah, great question. So it's a little bit of both. Like it's, it's definitely what I find for most people, they have low vagal tone and it's actually something that we sometimes can actually can inherit from our, from our parents. And then, but what the great thing about it is you can strengthen it. It's like a muscle, right? So doing regular exercise, like I do with my clients, where we increase their vagal tone, when your vagal tone is stronger, you're able to um, think more critically, your, your nervous system is able to move more into that ventral vagal state where the, and then the sound of your voice is going to be heard more through those inner ears. Uh, bones that I just mentioned, so the jawbone uh, of your audience. And then also, yes, and then going before going into a meeting or to a presentation, doing some things to help. Uh, I call it neurological fitness, where you are doing a couple short, like one to two minute exercises that engage the vagus nerve so that it's going to bring you more into that ventral vagal state. So what, what's an exercise that I could do before my next meeting? I mean, is this like <laughs> a physical stretching or like a vocal no, warm up? Yeah. There's a, there's a couple. Yeah. So one of them actually is going to be, it's actually an eye exercise. That's really, really, um, effective. So what you're going to do is you're going to keep your head straight and just look all the way to the right for 30 seconds, like almost like looking to the right hand corner. And then you're going to do the same thing on the left and holding for 30 seconds. And what this is doing is engaging your vagus nerve. And you, what you want to feel is like a, maybe a deeper swallow or uh, like more saliva in the mouth. You might start to feel your breath deepen. There's like a temperature change. Yeah. You're reminding me of this TikTok. I follow some of the um, like chiropractor and mm. body stretching all those accounts. And if what you're describing when you do the right and left look, if you touch the back base of your skull, I think that that's where the vagus, you can feel it yeah. when you move your eyes to the left and right, you can feel it in the base of your skull yep. move. Yep, exactly. Like that, yeah. I feel it. Yeah. So, so cool. that's it. So there's that. And there's also a tongue one. So that again, cause it's connected to your tongue, right? So you can take the tip of your tongue and place it right behind your upper front teeth. And just like, kind of like, like almost like pressing on the upper front teeth and then flatten your tongue up to the top of the roof of your mouth and just hold it for a few seconds and then release and do that. Like maybe just a couple times. And so that's also affecting, affecting your posture. Cause your tongue is also really connected to your posture. So that also, the, so that is engaging the vagus nerve and it's also helping to like shift your posture a little bit, which is also helping you to move more into that ventral state because all like if we're, if we're just regulated, like if we're in a fight or flight, we'll be really tensed up like this. And then we're not getting full breaths uh, before we're speaking. And then, and, or if we're in a shutdown response, we're going to be kind of like, you know, our shoulders are going to kind of roll in and we're just not, you know, we're just going to be more of that, like that feeling of like the lack of confidence that's going to come through in the voice. What do you do if you don't like your voice? A lot of people don't like the sound of their voice. Ah, uh, so yeah, it's true. I mean, most of my clients don't like the, the sound of their voice. Um, listen, I actually have them listen to their voice. So even if they don't like it, they eventually get used to it. So a lot of it has to do with too, like the, the state of their nervous system. So the more we get to work on this vagal toning, like a couple of those exercises I just shared with you, your voice will actually start to change and how you perceive the sound of your voice will also start to change. And so the only way that you're going to notice that though, is if you're listening to it. So like, I'll have my clients like, like listen to like little 30 second clips of them speaking. And then we kind of watch it over time, like how it's changed and shifted. And like, oh yeah, that actually like sounds like a lot more appealing or like, like I like more of the sound of my voice now since doing these exercises. Well, in thinking about podcasting, I know that you, you're a guest on podcasts. You talk about this stuff all the time. And I always wonder, I prefer a faster pace of speech, I think than most people, and I probably speak faster. Is there, is there kind of a, 
a happy medium for how quickly you should speak where you don't sound nervous like you're trying to spit out all the words too fast but you don't sound like you don't know what you're about to say next and you're slow yeah and there's so, so much nuance here with this um and i think you're right i i i I think it all comes down to pausing a little bit though, Emily, like that's the biggest piece. So like you can speak somewhat rapidly, but you're taking pauses in between what you're saying. It's like, cause you're then you're taking that breath and then that's going to send again, like a subconscious signal to your listeners. They are also, their nervous systems are picking up on yours. So they're going to take a breath and like, they're going to be able to actually perceive your voice as something that, that then turns on their prefrontal cortex. It makes sense. And I hadn't thought about it as such a give and take where yeah. my, energy my presentation is actually affecting how comfortable or calm you feel about the message i'm giving you yes yeah um, like our, our nervous systems mirror each other so yeah. and we and we hear part of the way we know someone's state is through the sound of their voice is it confusing when you're on zoom because i was i'm reading um the laws of human nature by robert green and he talks about in this book you cannot fool somebody with the voice you can do you can smile you can fake mm -hmm. smile and you can yep. act like you know, take up more space, be more confident physically, but the sound of your voice, it never lies is what he says. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to do that. Like if you are angry, it's hard to speak through that and make it sound like you're really happy. hundred <laughs> percent. It's know. actually very, 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 it's actually very true. Yeah. Like I, um, it's very hard to hide your emotional state with the tone of your voice. Um, and so yes, with like, with being on zoom and like watching somebody there's, yeah, there's more you can kind of, I guess, quote unquote, fake in that, but with voice, no, you can't. And we feel it. Like, I think there was a study that was done. They were measuring the accuracy. They see people listen to like 30 second clips of a doctor, just the voice only. And then they would, they could be able to tell within those 30 second clips, whether that doctor was going to be sued for malpractice or not. They could tell how empathetic that doctor, that surgeon was based on the sound of their voice only. So powerful. I, I find it easier to connect with people on a phone call because I'm not distracted. With yes. the physical. Yes. I think, I think a lot of us feel that way at this point. <laughs> yes. I mean, there's some people aren't auditory though. Like I know some people can't, not everybody like enjoys, like, like they have a difficult time, like with podcasts or just listening, but I will say that like having just that one sense, instead of having like all the senses of like, you know, that, like you said, the visual aspect and it can be, can be very powerful to just kind of have that one sense for your brain and your nervous system to focus on. Something else I wanted to ask you on that note with zoom calls and we're, we're on them doing video more than ever before. Mm -hmm. Is it, is it more exhausting for us because it is multi-sensory? So you're processing more information yes. and you're seeing yourself, which human beings are not meant to ever see ourselves while we're speaking. Like that's weird. Yeah. There's a whole, yeah, there's been like some more research is coming out about this, like the, the Zoom fatigue or the fatigue of video. So now actually some companies are actually giving people the option to turn off their video in meetings because they're just like, because they're in so many meetings all day and they're literally uh, exhibiting a lot of fatigue in this. And it's very difficult for them to focus and to concentrate. Yeah, I, I saw some study that said that inherently in Zoom because of the technology, there's a millisecond, a few milliseconds delay where you're seeing my hand move just slightly later than it would have moved in real life. Mm. And it makes your brain work just a little harder to kind of put that together in a line. Yeah. Does that sound right to you? Yeah, no, it does. Yeah, exactly. It's um, a, a lot of this technology is new for our biology, obviously, right? Like this is the technology is moving faster than even like our nervous systems and our brains can keep up with. So this is where we then have to find ways to work with our our brain and our systems in a way where we're not getting overloaded. And honestly, I think, yeah, for the most part, just the last couple of years, most people are in a very high functioning freeze response where there's a lot of mobilizing energy of that, like fight or flight and like go, go energy mixed with shutdown because of the, the capacity within the system. So almost like I got to do all these things, but like, I don't have the energy to do it. Like you feel all this tired, but wired feeling that's the freeze response. And there's a lot of freeze going on right now. So we want to like, in order to work with freeze, try to mitigate as much stimulation as possible. That makes sense. I love your Instagram. You do the sensory pause. Mm -hmm. um, everybody follow Laura on Instagram. It's a fantastic <laughs> account. Great tips on nervous system, entrepreneurship. What, what's your Instagram handle? Uh, Laura Lisa Larios. <laughs> Laura Lisa Larios. We'll put that in the yeah. description below. Make sure you follow Laura. Uh, the, the little sensory pauses you do where it's just like, feel your feet on the ground. You are supported. 
Yeah. Listen to the sound of the ocean. <laughs> even for, <laughs> does it help even for a minute to do that? It does. Yeah. It, it, it kind of like it refocuses the the brain and the, and the nervous system to a moment of like just beginning to notice a little bit of of that sense of safety because our, to our nervous system either something is safe or unsafe and cognitively we know we're safe but our nervous system when we're on the go and we're doing all these things we're on all these calls we're hearing about all these things within the news like our system's perceiving all this threat so it's like how do we start to bring in just a little bit more safety into the system so even just like I said, a few seconds of like tuning into that like your feet on the floor and like paying attention to some sensory sounds is helping to support the system for more of that safety that's great. I, I've been trying to do it more often since meeting you. Uh, so you offer coaching, consulting, speaking to high functioning executives, entrepreneurs. It's incredible. Um, let people know where they can find you and learn more about your work. Yeah. So they can find me on Instagram. I'm there a lot. Like, uh, like you were sharing, um, I share a lot of stuff in my stories and then they can also find me on my website, which is lauralisalarios.com and over on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm over on LinkedIn as well. So you can find me there. And Laura will send you a voice LinkedIn message. <laughs> that yes, is like you were voice texting back and forth at first. It's like, yes. yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. I love, I love connecting with people through the voice. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thanks, Laura. This has been very educational. Thank you, Emily.